Now let's add the ability to create multiple save game files and to load from the different save game files. We'll start by opening the solution and modifying the save game service class. The first thing we'll do is delete the old constant with the hard-coded save game file name and then we'll go into the save and the load last save or create new functions and add a file name parameter. So this way we can pass a file name into the functions and use that for when we write the file. We'll now write to the passed in parameter file name. And when we load the file, we're going to see if that file exists, the passed in name, and we're going to read all the text from that one instead of using the hard coded name that we had in there before. Then we'll go into the WPF UI project, add a new Windows subdirectory, and then create a new window in there called yes no window. There is a built-in function called message box that will show a yes or no pop-up box, but it's an old one that uses the Windows 32 format. It looks like an old Windows form program, doesn't look like the rest of the game. So we're going to have our own, so it looks more like the game, plus it centers on the screen we want to center on. And the XAML for that is pretty simple. All we do is we have the minimum height and width and we're going to size it to the content for the width and height. And it's just a grid that has three rows. It's going, the first row is going to show the text, the message. Then we're going to, on the last row, we're going to have a no button and a yes button. If they click the no, we'll call the no on click function. If they click the yes, we'll call the yes on click function. And for the label, we gave it a specific name, x colon name equals message because we want to pass in different messages for the yes, no pop-up box, and we want to change the label. And this is the simplest way to say which label we want to change. It's going to be the label called message. The code behind for that yes, no window is pretty simple. We have a public Boolean property, clicked yes. We have the constructor, and notice that the constructor has two parameters, the title and the message. We're going to take the title parameter and set that to the title of the window. And we're going to take the message and we're going to go to the message.content and set its value to the passed in message. And this message here is the label called message. Then if a user clicks yes, we call this yes on click function. That's going to set the clicked yes property to true and then close the window. And if they click no, we're going to say clicked yes equals false and close the window. So this way, after the user clicks yes or no, we'll see what the user clicked and we can use that to determine what to do in our code. Then we'll go into the main window.xaml and we're going to put the menu in here now. On line 31, we used to have a label that said menu and now lines 31 through 54 are a real menu. This menu control, we set the row and the column to display it on. We say we want to span the whole screen, which in this case is two columns. Underneath this parent menu control, we have two menu item controls. One has got a header of file and one has a header of help. These are gonna be the ones that are in the horizontal part of the menu. So the first option will be file, the second option will be help. And underneath each of these menu items, we have some child menu items. When you click on the file option from the menu, it will drop down and list these menu items. In this case, it's going to be a menu item with start new game, which when you click it is going to call the start new game on click function. We have a separator, it's just a horizontal bar in the menu that you'll see in a minute. We have a menu option for loading the game and for saving the game and finally one for exiting. Underneath the help menu item, we have two menu items, help and about. And I've set is enabled to false on both of these because right now we don't do anything with them. But I wanted you to see kind of how a menu would work with the horizontal option and the drop down options. So these are just in here now. So you get an idea, a little better idea of how the menu items work. Now that we have the menu in the UI, we need to add the code and the code behind for all these click functions. So we're going to mainwindow.xaml.cs and the first thing we have to do is add two new using directives. One is going to be Microsoft.win32. 
This is the namespace that has the open and save file dialog boxes. The window that pops up and lets you search through the different directories to find your saved files, or lets you search through the different directories and say where you're going to write your file your, when you save the game. And then the WPFUI.windows is the home of the yes no window that we just created. So we need to include that using directive. On line 19, we have a new constant. And now we're just doing the save game file extension. This is the extension we're going to use for our save game files to make it a little bit easier to find. And I created a new function called set active game session to that takes in a game session parameter. What this will do is unsubscribe from the message broker, set the game session backing variable to the passed in game session. Then it will set the data context to the backing variable, which is a reference to the passed in game session object. We'll clear out the game messages from the previous game, and then we'll resubscribe to the message broker on message raised. We have this in its own function because now we're going to do this in several different places. If you create a new game, it's going to go through here. If you load an existing game, you want to go through this function. That's why this is in its own function. So then we go back to our constructor and now instead of doing all the code that we used to do for the subscribing to the message broker, we're going to just have set active game session to a new game session object. That'll call that new function we just created, which will set everything to a new empty starting game, the default game. Now for the menu options, on lines 140 through 143, we have the start new game on click. If the user selects start new game from the menu, we're going to run set active game session to a new game session object since they're starting a new game. On lines 145 through 158, we're going to have the load game on click handler. And what this is going to do is create a new open file dialog object. And this is the one that pops up a window and lets you search for a file in the, in your directories. And we're going to say the initial directory and where it's going to start is going to be app domain, current domain, base directory. This is just the directory that the application is running in. And we're going to say the filter is saved games with the save game file extension. This first part is the text that's going to display in the dropdown. We'll see that in a minute. And this second part is what to actually is going to be filtered in here. What's going to show up is valid options to select. Then we say if open file dialog dot show dialog equals true. So this will take the open file dialog object we just created. It will show it. And if the result is true, so if the user clicked a file and said, okay, then we're going to say set active game session to the game session object we create from the open file dialogues file name. This is the file name that was selected by the user before they click the okay button. We're going to pass that into our game service function. It will read that file. It will convert it into a game session object. And then this will call the set active game session to the game session object we just created. If the user clicks the cancel button on the open file dialog, then show dialog will not return true. It will return false. So we don't load the, any file. On lines 160 to 163 are the save game menu option handler. And we're going to call a new function called save game. I'll scroll down to that real quick. And that has the save file dialog object. Same type of thing. It's the windows pop up that shows you a directory. We're going to set the initial directory to the same, the filter to the save game file extension. And this is going to let the user move around to a directory, type in a file name, and that will all be triggered by the show dialog function on this. That's what causes the window to pop up. And if the user clicks OK, again, just like the open file dialog, if the user clicks OK, it will be true. And in this case, we're going to call the save game service dot save, passing in the current game session 
to whatever file name the user entered on the save file dialog box. We've got this in its own function because we also want to do that in the main window on closing function. And that's going to pop up our yes no window, that new window we just created, passing in the title of save game and the message of do you want to save your game. We'll set the owner for this yes no window to this current window, which lets it center on the window. We'll show the dialog, and then once the user gets out of there, if on that yes no window they clicked yes, that public property is true, then we'll save the game, which at that point goes to our save game function, pops up the save file dialog to let them choose the directory and the file name, just like the other save game function did. So now let's run this and take a look at it. I start out here in the town square. I'm going to go north to the herbalist hut, click on file, start new game, and I'm in the town square. Let's go further north so we have some messages here. So here's some messages. If I say start new game, I'm back at the town square and the old messages have been cleared out. Let's go north and save this game. Here's our save file dialog pop-up and the save is type saved games asterisk.soscsrpg. That's that filter that we set here. I'm going to say game01 save that. I'll go south, east, now I'm at the town gate. So I say load game, we get the pop-up. It shows us all the SOS CSRPG extension files, which in this case is just game01. Double click that and now I'm back at the herbalist hut. And if I go to the exit, I get the yes no window that pops up that says do you want to save your game, yes or no. If I click yes, then I get the save file dialog and I can call this one game02 and it closes the game. So that's it for this lesson. Just to let you know if you're following along to the lessons as they go live, I'm going to be moving in a couple weeks so the next two or three weeks are going to be a little busy. I don't know if I'm going to create any new lessons until after I get settled in. The good news is when I do get settled in, I'm going to have gigabit fiber internet. So maybe I'll be able to do some live coding things on Twitch, something I'm thinking about. But until then, if you have any questions, and if you're watching the video on YouTube, in the description below the video, there will be all the links to the Discord channel, to the support page with the source code. If you have any questions, you can leave them on the support page or you can leave them beneath the YouTube video and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible, although I may be offline a day or two here and there. Otherwise, everybody stay safe, and I hope to see you soon.